I had my mom who has invested heavily in the business. Mm. So I can't just wake up one day when things get so bad and I really want to give up, which happens like about seven times a day. I can't just decide, okay, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> when I started, I have a very big mouth. So even before I started anything, I already went around telling everybody, hmm, I'm doing shoes, oh, I'm doing shoes. You guys just wait. You can't wait to see my shoes. This be so fantastic. So... When I got in and I realized, okay, this is really, really difficult. I don't think I can do this. And then I go and I meet my friend and say, how far is this your shoe? And I'll be like, um, um, um. So it was just me not wanting, wanting to keep umming, umming, umming whenever I saw my friend. So that was another drive that, you know, made me more determined to make this work. So the next time I meet them, I have an actual real thing to show, not just stories and ums and ahs and everything. Um, the third thing was, when I got started was my workers because I realized that these people are depending on me for their livelihood. Mm. So I need to hustle not just for me but for them. I asked them if the successes recorded were mere patronage owing to the agenda and the answer suggests they had to be as good as standard delivery could offer if they will continue on the path of the business concern. A lot, actually. Initially, when I started, I didn't really think so much about um, the reception that I would get from people. I, I just wanted to do a job, and I didn't say bigger in it. I didn't think I was going to have plenty of issues. But then, I'm, when I go out and I talk about I'm a painter, I can actually do it like, are you sure you're a painter? Even recently, I actually had, um, I went to meet with a client. I spoke with him. He heard a lady's voice. But I went with a guy, and when he was talking, he was looking at the guy. And the guy is not a painter. He just escorted me to the place. And I was like, I am the painter. And then he looked at me. He continued. I was like, I'm the painter. He spoke to me on the phone. I was like, are you sure? Can you do the job? So it's, it, it's, it's still something that is still ongoing. I think Nigerians were still yet to accept that women can actually, do, I mean, we have female mechanics, we have female carpenters. It's actually a job. Anybody can do anything. We shouldn't restrict jobs to just, we have guys that cook. It's not a woman's job. So that it pays your bills. Do it and go with the money and make your clients happy. That's all that matters. I feel like the fact that I'm a lady in a male-dominated industry, I feel like people will say, the fact that she was able to make it in this industry shows that she, she really knows her onion, shows that she really stands out. Because it's easy for when everybody's, how would I say this? I don't want to use the word equal. But it's the kind of thing where I would always trust a female barber to a male barber. Because I feel like for her to have made it in that industry, she needed to have beaten all the men and stood out for her to be there and be thriving. So she's probably even better than all of them. So that's the way I feel men see me in this industry. 80% of my customers are guys, actually. Female entrepreneurship in Nigeria is driven by microfinancing as well as family dynamics that work to shape and influence the birth of such businesses. This is very true for Chisum, a practicing lawyer whose family and friends are her first set of clientele base in her shoemaking business. Her mom runs a voluntary marketing communications campaign for her daughter's chosen business type. I think people keep thinking that, oh, it has to be big, it has to be grand, it has to be perfect before they can start. People need to understand that starting small is just not a slogan. You can start as minutely as possible. To start this business, I didn't really invest a lot at the beginning. It was only as I started progressing and I could invest from operations and also my personal funds and outside funding that I did. So let me, let me even break it down to you how I started, right? So... And this goes to any entrepreneur out there. Your first customers should be your friends and family. And if your friends and family are not buying from you, then you, you, you are either in a horrible business or you are a horrible business person. That's just it. Because your friends and families are those that will support you from day one. They are your ride or die. So if they don't support you, then something is very, very wrong. Okay. So how I started, I went to my brother and my sister. I'm like, okay, so I'm doing this. 
and I want to make a pair of shoes for you. Please give me a deposit. With that deposit, I went to the market. I bought materials. I sat down with a shoemaker. Both of us, we figured out how to make this shoe. When it was done, I came, I sold it, and I made my profit. And they bought it? And they bought it. That was it. So from there, I started going. My sister tells her friends, oh, these, things, these shoes are fantastic, come and support. My brother tells his friend, this is fantastic, come and support. My dad buys, does the, does the same thing. My mom buys, does the same thing. And then from there, it just grows and grows and grows. I, have, I haven't done any massive marketing, not, not, not even Instagram marketing. And I have a database of customers, mostly brought on by referrals and word of mouth. So you really and truly do not even need a bank loan, except if you're starting a very, very capital-intensive business. What's the fun if I sit back at home and then tell them, okay, I have printers, go here, do the job, and I'm not there. It's your, what I do has to be fun, has to be able to pay my bills, has to make my life better and the next person better. So my job actually encompasses all of this. I'm always on the move, going to site, inspecting, painting. You know, I, I, it actually started with me being part of everything from start to finish. Now, I have different sites running at the same time, most of the time. So there are, there are, just, uh, there are just a few places I can be at to work. So a, entrepreneurship is you being part of the business and not just delegating. You have to be, uh, your people or the people following you have to see that you can actually do the job too, even without them. They, 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 they have to learn from you, see you doing certain things and then follow your footsteps. But if you don't really have much to show them and you're just delegating, I think that's just um, running a business, sort of, I don't know. <laughs>